So today you are going to need both math books. Want, you want to make sure that you have the additional practice workbook. That is what you are going to do on your own today. And then you also want to make sure that you have that volume two math book. All right. So we are going to continue working on those two-step word problems. We've practiced with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Well, today it's a mix. We're going to use all four of them. So let's go ahead and watch our video, do a quick little practice together, and we will go from there. All right, here we go. How can you solve two-step problems? Troll can rent a car and GPS device for $325 for seven days. What is the cost to rent the car for a week without the GPS device? There are two operations needed to solve this problem. To solve a two-step problem, you must first find and answer the hidden question. The hidden question is, how much does it cost to rent the GPS for seven days? Let A stand for the cost to rent the GPS for seven days. Which equation can be used to solve the hidden question? All right, so let's select your answer. Let's think about that. They are wanting to know which equation shows how much it costs to rent the GPS for seven days. So if we look at our chart, we know it's $9 a day. So if you're going to use it each day for seven days, how much money would you spend? Would you add, subtract, multiply, or divide to figure that out? Take a minute and think about that. Well, if you're using it each day, you would be multiplying. Seven times nine dollars equals A, which equals sixty-three dollars. It costs sixty-three dollars to rent the GPS for seven days. Write and solve an equation for the problem. Let B stand for the cost to rent the car without the GPS for seven days. Three hundred twenty-five dollars. Minus $63 equals B, which equals $262. You can use compatible numbers and mental math to estimate. Just a strategy, you don't have to. Equals 63. 63 is close to 75. And 325 minus 75 is 250. 250 is close to 262. So the answer is reasonable. It costs $262 to rent the car without the GPS for seven days. All right, so let's go ahead and turn to page 419 in that um, topic two math book. And sorry, two times. All right, so we are turning to page 418 and actually 419. We're going to use this chart, just like the same chart on the video, to answer our first question, number three. Okay, so number three says, look at the box over here on the previous page. How much would it cost to rent the car for a week with the GPS and DVD player? All right, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So the first thing we need to figure out is how much is it going to cost for the DVD player? Well, each day it costs how much? Six dollars, right? And if you're going to use it for a whole week, what, how many days are in a week? There are seven days in a week. So if you're going to use it each day, 
what are you going to use? Multiplication, division, subtraction, or addition? Go ahead and write your symbol down. Okay, you should be using multiplication and you are multiplying it by seven. So when you multiply six by seven, what do you get? Go ahead and write it down. All right, you get $42. So we know for a whole week, the DVD player costs $42, right? All right, well, they wanna know how much it costs with the rental of the car for a week that already includes that GPS. So if you look here, Jill can rent a car and GPS for $325. So now we've got $325 and we've got $42. What are we gonna do with the 325 in the 42? Multiply, subtract, add or divide? Go ahead and write down your symbol. You should be adding, okay? And if you're like me, I like to stack my numbers so that I can go ahead and add them correctly, making sure I'm lining up my ones, tens, and hundreds place. So go ahead and solve that so that we can figure out how much it would cost Jill to rent the car for a week with the GPS and the DVD player. Okay, so if you added it correctly, we would say five plus two equals seven, two plus four equals six, and three plus nothing equals three. So it would cost $367 to rent the car with the GPS and the DVD player. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and look at number four. Trish bought four yards of rope to make a swing. Judy spent $18 on a rope. How much did the two girls spend in all? All right. Well, we need to figure out first, Trish. We don't know how much money Trish spent. It just tells us she bought four yards of rope. Well, if we look over here, each yard of rope costs $3. So I'm gonna use four and three for my first step. What? am I going to do with that four and three? Am I gonna divide, add, subtract, or multiply? What do you think? You would multiply. So four times three equals how many dollars? It equals $12. So Trish spent $12. But they want to know how much Trish and Judy spent, right? How much did the two girls spend in all? So if we look at Judy, well, we know Judy spent $18. And we just learned Trish spent $12. What are we going to do to figure that out? Well, here's a key word right here. In all. In all. All means all together. So that means we are going to add. So when you add 18 and 12, what do you get? How much did the girl spend? Go ahead and solve that. Remember, if you need to stack it to solve it, you can. We know eight plus two equals 10, put down the zero, carry the one. I always circle my one so I don't forget about it. And then I have one, two, three. So the girl spent a total of 
dollars. Okay, guys. All right, last one we are going to do together. Go ahead and read along with me. Martha has 12 stamps. Tony has 21 stamps. Tony divides, oh, is that a keyword? Her stamps into three equal groups. She gives one group to Martha. Guys, I'm hearing a lot of keywords that are helping me here. How many stamps does Martha have now? All right, well, we need to figure out, it says Tony has 21 stamps, but then she divides and she gives away. So we need to figure out that first step. That's going to be our first one. So we know Tony had 21 stamps, and she divides her stamps into three equal groups. What's the keyword there? Go ahead and box it. So we know we've got 21 and we've got three. What are we going to do with the 21 and three? We're dividing, right? So 21 divided by three equals what? Go ahead and write it down. You should have gotten seven. So Tony has seven stamps in each group. So that's like saying this group she has seven, this group she has seven, and this group she has seven, right? Then she gives one group to Martha. How many are in one group? We just figured that out, right? Seven. They, so she gave Martha seven of her stamps, right? So how many stamps does Martha have now? Okay, well, how many stamps did Martha start with? Go ahead and reread that and find that number. Circle it. Martha had 12 stamps to start with, right? And then Tony gave her seven. If someone's giving you something, are you adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Are you getting more or are you getting less? If they give you something, you are getting more. So you are adding. And you're going to add that seven more to those 12 stamps that Martha already has. And go ahead and write how many stamps Martha had after she got her seven stamps. Go ahead and write it down. You should have gotten 19 stamps. Okay, guys. So hopefully we're kind of getting the hang of this. This is our third day practicing. We'll have a nice review tomorrow, and then we will end our week with a test. Um, but I want you to go ahead and make sure now that you have your additional practice book. And you're going to want to go ahead and turn to page 135. You are going to do all of the problems on the front and on the back. Oops. Okay. It is really important that mom and dad are going over this with you and they're checking it with you. Okay, guys. And then when they have gone over it and you've fixed any mistakes or you've celebrated if you've gotten them all right, you are going to post three of the answers. So let's go ahead and put a little star next to number one. That's going to be a discussion post question. Number two is going to be a discussion post question. And number five, okay? That's on Schoology too, so you'll know which three I want you to post. But make sure you're looking for those keywords, you're thinking about the hidden question, and you're thinking about the numbers you're using. All right, guys? All right, have a great day, and I'll talk to you later.